Hey there, I'm Stephanie Flaxman. I've been a writer and editor for 20 years, and I have more than 200 videos on YouTube that help you live and work like a writer. That is a lot of videos, so let me curate my best advice for you. You can sign up for free exclusive updates at stephanieflaxman.com. I'll send you my top tips for new writers, plus other advice that works best in email rather than audio or video. It would be my pleasure to meet you at your inbox as your new writer consultant. Ready to join the club? Go to stephanieflaxman.com to sign up for free. And remember, I spell Stephanie with an F, not a PH. The proper spelling is on your screen right now. That is stephanieflaxman.com. I'll see you there. I did it. I officially swore off going to the coffee shop where the guy says, no worries instead of you're welcome. And that is not the only reason why. I would really like to support this coffee shop that is local, that is independently owned. But there are multiple elements to the customer service experience there that is just so bad. Why would I give them my money? And I really think this is important for anything that you are experiencing. If you are lucky enough to choose where to spend your money, you don't have to spend it in places that give you bad experiences because they don't really care about what they offer. So in terms of product, the coffee that you get there, I've tried multiple different types of coffee drinks. It is completely comparable to Starbucks. There are other chain coffee shops and independent coffee shops that do coffee very well, that care about what they do and deliver a good experience. This independently owned coffee shop does not replicate that. And the product is not better than Starbucks. So at the core of this, they're not delivering something that is special. So that's reason enough not to go to some place not to do business with someone. But on top of that, the business does not care to train their employees for one reason or another on good customer service. And it's not like a fun culture of people who don't care about you, but they care about delivering good coffee. They don't care about anything. <laughs> so I don't care about going there anymore. Once I walked in, and uh, the minute I walked in the door, the no worries guy said, what can I get you? The minute I walked in and I said, well, I'm thinking about trying something new. And I was looking at the board where they have, you know, all the standard coffee drinks. There's, there's nothing special. They can put a fancy name on it, like vintage vanilla. It's, it's not special. It's all the same. And, the, and so I said, I'm interested in trying something new. And the guy just stood there and stared at me. He didn't tell me what he liked from the menu. He didn't offer suggestions of what other people like. Nothing to guide me along as a customer. So he, he, they don't, and that's just what the vibe is. And then when you order something, they don't care if you like it or not. They just sort of like shove it at you and don't, and don't care if you like what you ordered, if you're happy being one of their customers. How how does the business owner think that this is okay and, and people will just keep coming back? Again, when the core issue is the product isn't that good. It's not like, oh, the coffee's so amazing, they can get away with it. No, it's all the same. It's the same as Starbucks or worse and more expensive. So another element of their bad customer services at the counter there, right below the counter in the glass case, there are all these different pastries and baked goods that look really good. Uh, they, they don't look bad, but I have no idea if they're baked in-house. I have no idea where they're from. They're not labeled, and the prices are not on them as well. So when you have a bunch of good-looking food that isn't labeled in any way, it requires interaction with the people who work at the coffee shop. But the people at the coffee shop do not want to answer questions about uh, their baked goods. Because if you ask them any question, they act like they are put out just by 
you being there, a customer asking them a question. And I unfortunately have found this as a common thread through a lot of customer service experiences, especially in person, that if you ask someone to do your, their job, they act put out. They act like, I can't believe you came into the store as a patron today and are asking me something. It's just an attitude. And I don't blame the person. I, I blame the their place of employment for not training them to give customers a better experience that the business doesn't realize that customers have a lot of choices and can go elsewhere and they will if the store doesn't offer them something special. So I was looking at the baked goods the other day, the last day that I will ever set foot in that coffee shop. I was looking at the baked goods and it was loud because they were uh, running espresso machines and I, I couldn't hear, um, the woman behind the counter's answer when I asked, uh, she was talking so softly for being in a loud coffee shop. So I had to ask her to repeat it. She looked really annoyed. You can't have employees who don't want to interact with customers when you don't have labeled goods for sale, where the customer can't even determine what they are or what they cost. It just sort of, if you're not going to label your baked goods with uh, details about what they are and how much they cost, you need to have friendly employees who don't mind interacting with customers. So I'm not going there anymore. I've made that decision. But I think that there are some really great parallels here to writing. When writing is just information online, which is what you find in all of the junk content online, it's sort of like that experience at the coffee shop. The coffee shop is just giving you, you know, proverbial information. I sell coffee. It's a product. My employees act like they don't want to be here. I'm not going to be super helpful. It's all just information. It's all just interchangeable with other coffee shops. And it's even worse than other coffee shops because the chains like Phil's, the people who work there really care about coffee and they care about your experience with the coffee that you purchase there. That is a chain doing it well, in my opinion. But when your writing is just information, it's bad customer service. It's saying, I'm not giving you a reason to keep reading. I'm not giving you a reason to stay here on this page to continue looking at these words that explain my message. I'm not giving you a reason to pay attention to me as a writer. When writing is just information, it, to me, it is like my experience at this coffee shop. It is, uh, it's nameless. It's sort of vague, general, interchangeable. But good writing could be like a coffee shop who hires people who really care about the product, who trains them to interact with their customers so that the customers have a good experience. So good writing has details. It has nuance. It has a reason to stick around and hear from this offer because this offer <laughs> from this author, because the writer, the author has a point of view, a, a perspective that is different from anything else that you read. You could read the same information on 20 websites, but if you find a good writer presenting that information, you're going to get a combination of their point of view, maybe some stories that are unique, analogies, metaphors, nuance, maybe layers of meaning. And that's what will bring a writer back to check out more from that author. If they don't have that, they're like me leaving the coffee shop. And not coming back. So in the comments below, let me know if you have any other observations about how bad writing is like bad customer service, and then go save the internet. That is it for today. If you'd like to get exclusive tips that I only share in email, go on over to stephanieflaxman.com and sign up for free. I will see you there and talk with you soon.